National Geographic Kids Readers, Animal Architects by Libby Romero. Master Builders. Do you know the story of the three little pigs? Each little pig built a house. One was made out of straw, another out of sticks, and the third out of bricks. Beavers are well-known animal architects. They build dams out of sticks and mud. Their homes, called lodges, are inside the dams. Pigs don't really build houses, but many animals do build their own homes. Animals build other things too. They are gifted architects, architects, and sometimes the results are amazing. Word to know: architect, the designer or creator of something, usually a structure like a building or a bridge. Busy birds. You've probably seen a bird's nest, but have you seen a nest as big as a haystack? You could in South Africa. Up to 400 birds can live in a sociable weaver's nest. Other types of birds often move in to share the space. Sociable, sociable weavers build huge drooping nests over the tops of trees and telephone poles. The birds build the roof and frame out of large sticks. They use dry grasses to make dozens of rooms. For comfort, they line the rooms with soft grasses and other materials. Finally, they arm each entrance with sharp, spiky straw. This keeps animals that hunt birds, like snakes, out of the nest. A sociable weaver perches at an entrance to the nest. Red oven birds are master sculptors. After it rains, the birds shape bits of mud and clay into dome-shaped nests. Inside the nest, there is a back room. A mother lays eggs there. This makes it easier to protect the eggs from predators. Words to know: predator, an animal that hunts and eats other animals. Colony, a group of one kind of plant or animal that lives together. The red oven bird gets its name from its nest, which looks like a clay oven. The bio weaver is another artist. This bird is a master weaver. The male collects long strands of leaves and grasses. Then he weaves and knots them together. Often, several males build nests close together to form a colony. Bio weavers often build nests that hang from thorny trees or tall palm trees. Why did the bird rent its nest? It was cheaper than building a new one. The male bowerbird builds fancy displays to attract a mate, but the female builds a nest to lay eggs and raise the chicks. Some birds are master builders; others are great artists. Male bowerbirds are both. To attract a mate, male bowerbirds build bowers or shelters out of sticks. Then they decorate the front. Some bowerbirds use natural items such as rocks, moss, nuts. Beetles, feathers, shells, or flower petals. Others use colorful or shiny human-made objects. And if none of that works, the male singing and dancing might do the trick. Spinning spiders. You don't have to look far to see the work of spiders. These animals build their silky webs just about everywhere. Cobwebs might hang in corners in your home. Webs with funnel-shaped tunnels cover grasses and shrubs. Grass spiders spin funnel webs. When prey gets near the opening, the spider darts out and grabs it. Some of the most beautiful spider webs are orbs. They hang between the leaves on plants and trees. Orb webs have rows of circles connected by lines. When the silky threads move, spiders know that predators or prey are nearby. Words to know: orb, circular or shaped like a globe; prey, an animal that is hunted and eaten by another animal. Most spiders add sticky glue to their webs to trap prey, but not the feather-legged lace weaver. It uses static cling. This spider's tiny spinnerets make super-thin silk. 
the spider yanks the silk from its body and combs it with hairs on its back legs as it builds the web. <laughs> Word to know. Spinneret, a small silk-making part of a spider. This creates an electrostatic charge. The charge attracts insects. It makes them cling to the web just like socks sometimes stick to towels in a dryer. How do spiders make webs? Spiders pull silk threads out of special body parts called spinnerets. Then they spin webs with their legs. Each set of spinnerets makes a different type of silk, sticky, not sticky, or even super fine. This allows a spider to spin different types of webs. Where did the spider learn how to spin its web? On a website. The net casting spider doesn't attract prey to its web. It takes the web to its prey. This spider holds its web as it hangs from a silk thread. When prey approaches, the spider throws the net down on its prey. A net casting spider's thick rectangular web is about the size of a postage stamp. Not all spiders spin webs. The trapdoor spider digs a tunnel. The door of the tunnel has a silk hinge. The spider closes the door and waits. If an insect gets close, the spider jumps out, grabs it, and drags it into the tunnel. Trapdoor spiders line the inside of their tunnels with silk. When the trapdoor is closed, plants and soil make the spider's home hard to see. Ants and termites. Many ants work together to pull a leaf into place. Ants live just about everywhere. Australian weaver ants live on bushes and trees. They build nests out of leaves. Working as a team, the ants pull and bend leaves into a tent-like shape. Then the ants pick up their larvae, larvae. The larvae squirt out silk that will glue the nest together. Were to know, larvae, the newly hatched forms of some insects. Larvae don't look like the adults. Australian weaver ants use their larvae like glue guns. You've probably seen an ant hill. Ants don't live in ant hills. They live under them in an underground nest. The ant hill is just the pile of dirt and sand that the ant colony removed when it built the nest. These nests are like underground cities. They have lots of rooms connected by tunnels. Each room has a purpose. There are rooms for laying eggs, raising the young, and storing garbage. Leafcutter ants even have a room to grow their own food. Millions of leafcutter ants cut and carry pieces of leaves to an underground colony. This illustration shows the many tunnels and rooms underground. Why did the ant go to the doctor? It had tunnel vision. Cathedral termite mounds can be more than 15 feet tall and up to 100 years old. Many termites live underground, but some are famous for the mounds they build above ground. Cathedral termites make their mounds out of mud, chewed wood, and their own spit and poop. Compass termites build tall, thin mounds. Each mound points north. Scientists think termites build them this way to control the temperature of their homes. In the morning, the sun shines on the wide eastern side of the mound. Termites go there to warm up. At noon, when the sun is strongest, it only shines on the narrow top. The rest of the mound stays cool. Compass termite mounds look like wedges that point north. Bees and wasps. Mason bees live by themselves, so females build nests on their own. There are many kinds of mason bees. A few make special nests out of flower petals. A female mason bee bites off flower petals to build her nest. First, the mother bee digs a tube-shaped hole in the ground. Next, she lines the hole with flower petals and mud. She fills part of the hole with pollen and nectar. Then she lays an egg on top. To keep the egg safe, she folds over the flower petals and caps the hole with mud. The nest is built with flower petals on the outside. Inside is a layer of mud and more flower petals. Each nest holds one egg. Words to know. Pollen. 
a yellow powder made by flowers. Nectar, the sweet, sticky liquid formed in flowers. You're probably familiar with honeybees. They live in hives. Honeybees don't build the outside of their hives. They move into human-made beehives or hollow trees. But they do build everything on the inside. Thousands of bees can live in a beehive. The inside of a hive is filled with sheets of six-sided waxy cells. The sheets are called honeycomb. Worker bees make the wax and chew it until it's soft. Then they shape it into honeycomb. Are you smarter than a honeybee? How would you design a home that doesn't waste any space? Ask a honeybee. The honeycomb they make has cells on both sides. The six-sided cells fit together perfectly. This design gives them the most space for growing eggs and storing honey and pollen. It also uses the least amount of wax to create. What's a bee's favorite Halloween costume? A zombie. Paper wasps build nests with six-sided cells too. To make their papery nests, the wasps chew up pieces of wood and plants. You might have seen their umbrella-shaped nests. They often hang under door frames or behind window shutters. Paper wasps add more cells as the colony grows. One nest can have up to 200 cells. Organ pipe mud daubers build nests out of mud. The female wasp takes a mouthful of mud and forms it into a ball. She carries the mud balls back to a wall. Then she spreads them into long, thin strips to make a nest. Weird but true. The organ pipe mud dauber stings a few spiders as she's building a nest. She stuffs them inside the cells so her young can have dinner after they hatch. What did the bee say to the wasp when it tried to enter their hive? Buzz off! Six cool facts about animal architects. One. Spider silk is stronger than steel and super stretchy. Recently, scientists made artificial spider silk in labs. It could be used to make everything from artificial limbs to stronger bike helmets. 2. The Darwin's bark spider spins the biggest, strongest webs in the world. Webs can be up to 82 feet wide, as long as two buses. 3. A beaver dam found in Canada was 2,788 feet long. It was so big it could be seen from space. 4. Some bowerbirds paint the walls of their towers with a mixture of charcoal dust, spit, and plant juices. They use their beaks, like in this photo, or pieces of bark as a paintbrush. 5. Swiftlets are small birds that live in caves. They build their nests mostly out of their own spit. People eat their nests in bird's nest soup. 6. Great apes usually build a new nest each night. Sometimes the new nest is right next to an old one. Room to grow. Caddisflies, caddis flies, are moth-like insects. Their soft, squishy larvae live in the water. To protect themselves, some larvae spin silk cases around their bodies. Others collect nearby objects and build their own suits of armor. Most caddisfly larvae hang on to their cases with hooked legs and drag them around. Weird but true. A French artist wanted to see what caddisfly larvae could do with gold and precious jewels. The larvae built beautiful and expensive works of art. Bagworm moth larvae do the same thing on land. Each species of bagworm moth makes its own special case. Some look like pine cones or little log cabins. As bagworm larvae grow, they add more pieces to make their cases bigger. As a spittlebug nymph grows, it breathes the air inside large bubbles and at the surface of the foam. Spittlebug nymphs don't need to collect things around them. They grow in a pile of foamy spit that they make themselves. Right after a spittlebug nymph hatches, it makes a sticky liquid. Then it starts to blow bubbles. The bubbly foam covers the nymph's body. It protects the nymph from heat and cold. 
It also keeps the nymph moist as it grows into an adult. Word to know. Nymph, a newly hatched insect that looks like a tiny adult. Ocean architects. Some of the greatest animal architects are corals. Corals are tiny animals that live in warm ocean waters. Individual corals, called polyps, polyps, are usually less than half an inch across. The largest coral reef is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. It stretches 16,000 miles and can be seen from space. Weird but true. Corals grow rings just like trees. Each ring shows one year of growth. The Great Barrier Reef is about 20,000 years old. To stay safe, some coral polyps build hard skeletons around their soft bodies. Hard corals like these live in colonies. As generations of skeletons stack up, they form a coral reef. Over hundreds or thousands of years, these reefs grow into massive ocean ecosystems. Word to know. Ecosystem. All living and non-living things that interact in one area. A tiny male pufferfish is another busy builder. For about 10 days, he makes patterns with his fins on the sandy ocean floor. He adds corals and shells as decoration. This creates a fancy round nest to attract females. The male pufferfish uses his body to make peaks and valleys in the sand. Decorator crabs have little spikes on their outer skeletons. Pieces of sponges, shells, and seaweed stick to the spikes. Once the crab's body is covered, it blends in with the surroundings. Weird but true. Decorator crabs outgrow their hard outer skeleton and grow a new one. Each time, they reuse pieces they have taken off their old shell to redecorate the new one. Why do pufferfish live in salt water? Pepper water would make them sneeze. Creature comforts. Usually, animals build things that help them survive. But for great apes, it's more than that. They want comfort. During the day, apes often build nests on the ground for napping. Two chimpanzees relax in a nest. But at night, they usually build nests high up in the trees. This keeps them safe from predators. The apes start with a bottom layer of sturdy branches. Then they weave a layer of thinner sticks. Finally, they top it off with a comfy layer of leaves. An orangutan holds her baby close in their treetop nest. A bagworm moth caterpillar builds a home to live in. Some bagworm moths stack tiny sticks to make a nest like a log cabin. Animal architects are everywhere, on land, in the sea, underground, and up in trees. Take a look around your neighborhood. You might be surprised at what you see. A bagworm moth caterpillar carries its home on its back. Quiz whiz. How much do you know about animal architects?